So the flowering plants are divided into two major categories, these natural groupings. They are called monocotyledons and dicotyledons. The cotyledon is what is known as the seed leaf. When you, when you plant a monocotyledon, such as corn, when the seed sprouts, it grows up into a single blade. Looks like a piece of grass. That's characteristic of the monocotyledons. The dicotyledons, like a green bean or a cucumber, when you plant that seed and it sprouts, it will sprout into two leaves every time. So that is a dicotyledon, monocotyledon, dicotyledon. That's one of the main distinctions and where they get their name. Now, another characteristic of these two uh, groups of flowering plants is the seeds themselves. If you take a peanut, for instance, which is a dicotyledon, if you open it up, you'll notice that the peanut will fall in half once you crack it open, or a cashew, or an acorn. These things will just naturally split in half once you remove the shell, the husk or the whatever, uh, the inside meat part of the seed will actually fall in half into two things. Peas are like this. That's why you can have split pea soup. Okay, they don't have a guy that they're paying to cut the little peas in half. No, they open up the peas, they remove the pod, and the peas naturally fall in half. That's because they're a dicotyledon. They have these two parts to the seed. Notice that we don't have split corn. No, we have cracked corn. Why? Because there's nothing in the corn kernel to fall in half. It's only one thing. So you can't split it evenly. You got to crush it. So we have cream corn and cracked corn or whole kernel corn, but you can't have split corn. They just don't have it. Now these natural groupings of monocot versus dicot exist only in the flowering plants. So they do not exist in mosses or ferns, and they do not exist in pines, the pine trees, the conifers. These only exist in the flowering plants. So what are the other characteristics of the monocots and the dicots? Well, come on, I'll show you. What are the characteristics of a dicot? Well, first, flower parts. Flower parts are in multiples of four or five. So in this particular plant right here, here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Multiples of four. Dicot. Monocots. The flower parts are in multiples of three. So if you take a flower and you look at the flower, you'll see the sepals are one, two, three. One, two, three. The petals are one, two, and three. So the flower parts are in multiples of three. Even if you were to count the anthers and even the little stigma, they're all in multiples of three. That's a monocot. Dicot leaves have a network of veins. They have a network system of veins. A single vein down the middle that branches and branches again and branches again. They're not parallel to one another. Leaf veins are networked. That's a dicot. The leaf veins of a monocot. Ah. Leaf veins are parallel to one another. So when you look at the leaf veins, they're all running in the same direction. Or in the case of like a palm, they're all radiating out from a single point. But they don't branch. They don't come down and then branch and branch again and branch again. They're not networked at all like the dicots. They are parallel to one another. The leaves are often blade or strop-like. The stem of a dicot is incredibly dry. It's hard, it's stiff, it's not bendy and herbaceous. It's woody. That's a dicot. The stem of a monocot is very flexible. It's herbaceous. It's bendy. Compare that with something like an azalea or an oak or a maple. Hard, woody, dry. These are soft, flexible, fleshy. They have a lot of juice on them, in them. That's what characterizes the monocot stem. The root system of a dicot has a single main root called a tap root with smaller roots that branch off from it in different directions. Oftentimes those smaller roots continue to branch themselves. So they have a main root with branching roots. That's a dicot. Monocots, the root systems are not the tap root with the branching roots coming off of it. Instead, most monocots have 
fibrous root systems. Lots and lots and lots of little tiny roots, all about the same size, all branching off from a single point. Oftentimes these guys have a stolon, an underground stem from which branch all kinds of leaves. This one, then this one, then this one. Oftentimes they're connected in a row. But they all had these small, thin, fibrous root systems, very characteristic of the monocots. So now that you've got the basics about monocots and dicots, let's go try to identify some plants. Networked leaf veins, dry woody stem, dicot. Tall and grass-like, flexible stem, parallel leaf veins, monocot. Flower parts, multiples of five, dicot. Bendy flexible stems, parallel leaf veins. And fibrous root system, bamboo, monocot. Dry woody stem, ah, wait a second. Needle-like leaves, conifer, not dicot or monocot. Conifers are not flowering plants. These little rushes or star egg grass. I'm not sure which one they are. But if you look, flower parts, multiples of three. Monocot, flexible stem, monocot. Palmettos, parallel leaf veins. All of them radiating from this central point right here. Also, really flexible bendy stems. Monocot. Flower parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Multiples of three, multiples of four, three, four. Don't just rely on one characteristic to determine monocot or dicot. Flexible stem. Looks like actually kind of dry and woody toward the bottom. Tap root with small roots coming off the edge. Leaf veins that branch. Dicot, we'll go with the 12 count. Monocots and dicots, the two major natural groupings of all flowering plants. How many of each type can you find around where you live?